Hey guys, what is going on? In today's video, we're going to be going over my top five favorite baits to fish for the smallmouth spawn. We're gonna be going over a few different color variations of those baits and a few different ways to rig those baits as well. Let's get right into it. Bait number one is a 3 8 or a half ounce jig with a craw trailer. The reason I like 3 8 or a half ounce, I feel that I can still kind of give it a good motion and it kind of stays in place. Um, without moving much and still being able to get a good motion. I use a craw trailer mainly because craws are the main forage in most of the lakes that I fish for smallmouth. Um, and I use a natural color because I'm fishing a lot of clear water and uh, clear water rocky bottoms. So I usually stick with a natural like a green pumpkin, sometimes a black and blue or a watermelon. Um, but with that being said, and that goes for pretty much any of these baits, if the water is murky and you are bed fishing, I would suggest going up to a, a color that is a higher viz color, a brighter color so that you can see it because that's the biggest thing with bed fishing is it's good to see your bait. So you can see when that fish picks it up, you can see if it's agitating that fish. So if the water is murky, dirty, stained, whatever, I would step it up to a pink or a white, a chartreuse for a jig, but with some of these other baits, a pink or a white would be fantastic. The next bait is going to be a swim jig, or just a swim bait. Now this is on a rage tail. This is the way I rig it if there's not many weeds in the around, if it's just a rocky bottom. Again, you can use a different color. I'm using more of a kind of a, a shad, a bait fist presentation. Um, this is going to be, if there's weeds, a swim jig head with a skirt and a weed guard so that you know, you're know you not getting tangled up with the weeds. Again, with the swim bait tails, uh, just change the color up depending on water clarity and then also what kind of forage is in the lake. If you're having, if you have mostly bluegill that they're feeding on, you know, kind of have more of a bluegill pattern. I've just found that for the lakes and the ponds that I fish for the spawn, that this, kind of, this color combo, this white and kind of bluish gray on the back works pretty good for me. Sometimes I'll have some speckle in there. This one is just kind of, Kind of plain but anyways the third bait is going to be the tube the tube jig this is probably one of my bait my favorite baits to fish for the spawn and year round i love fishing tube jigs for smallmouth it's very productive for me again you have a very natural color kind of a green pumpkin color with some black flake this is a coffee tube jig i believe by strike king um, this is a two and three quarters for smallmouth. I usually fish anywhere from two and a half to three. And then this is a quarter ounce tube jig uh, hook, I guess, weighted tube jig hook. Next is the good old go to. That is going to be the Senko. And there's three ways that I typically fish the Senko for spawn for year round, whatever it be. The first is going to be a weightless T-Rig, just like that. I believe that is a 4 aught EWG hook. Usually for smallmouth, I'll fish 2 aught to 3 aught. sometimes 4 aught I can get away with, but usually 3 aught is my good all around. Um, this is a five inch Senko. I would suggest with, uh, with my Senkos, I just buy all five inch. I don't really go up to six. I buy five and then if I need a four inch or even a three inch if I'm fishing uh, say a very small creek for smallmouth, uh, then I just cut off a five inch Senko basically. I just cut two inches, an inch or two inches off the five inch Senko. And I'm in weightless and you just let it do your work. You just slowly work it back um, and you can just throw it and just the way that it flutters, it just drives the fish crazy. And then the third way and the last way that I rig my Senkos is gonna be a Nico rig. So you have a little nail weight here in the bottom, and then you rig it about, not quite half, just a little under halfway up, and then I always rig mine, here I'll show you, I rig it like this, but I'll pull the hook out for you. I always rig mine with the hook facing up, so I just kinda of go in like you would for a T-rig, and then just come back out, and then boom, there it is. I always rig mine with the hook up, I feel, that with the hook facing up, I get better hookup ratio and I get better hook sets and in, in that in fish. Some people like to rig it uh, facing down, but I prefer up. And then lastly is 
just a little crankbait, not quite a micro crankbait. This is a red one to kind of imitate a craw. Um, I fish a lot of red for the craw, and then I do a bluegill pattern as well. That's mostly because, again, one of the main forages in all the lakes and, and ponds that I fish for these smallmouth is crawfish. And then it's also the second other main forage is the little bluegill. So I'm kind of matching the hatch there. And so far it's worked very effectively for me. Um, I believe these are the Strike King. I want to say they're either, I think they're 1.5s or they're, or they're a 3. Um, I usually just look for it to be diving anywhere from 5 to 8 feet is what I prefer. Um, just because... A lot of times when I'm throwing the crankbait, I'm not throwing it at fish that are bedded. I'm throwing it for the smallmouth that are still in the transitional period, whether they're transitioning onto spawning or they're transitioning out of the spawn. So I'm kind of throwing it in that slightly deeper water, um, kind of those drop-offs where the water goes, those ledges or ridges, whatever you want to call it, where the water goes from shallow to deep. I'm usually, I typically, because I'm fishing from shore most of the time, throwing it out to the deep water, working it back. And as I'm working it back, it'll be in the water and it'll start banging rocks on the bottom and coming back up. And that seems to, that does the trick for the fish. That seems to drive them crazy. And usually that's my, my crankbait is more of my transitional fish method to try and get those few fish that are still transitioning to the bed or are transitioning off beds. Whereas these four baits are mostly just for the fish on the bed. The swim bait, can still catch fish transitioning, but a lot of times I'll swim this past them and it'll, I'll just keep kind of throwing it, swimming it past them, swimming it past them. And then I can also, with this, it'll, I can sit it and kind of jig it next to them. And it usually gets the job done with these five baits. These are my five favorite baits to fish for smallmouth during the spawn. Some of these I fish throughout the year. Um, a lot of them like the tube jig, the Senko, those are my two favorite baits to fish for uh, smallmouth. I mean, if I'm not catching fish on, on anything, if it's a really tough day, usually the tube jigger, the, the Senko can pull me some fish. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.